Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures. Today we're going to be talking about replacing those orange things in there. Those are new fuel injectors with 12 hole. The old ones were one hole. So let's get into it and go through the process. We're gonna do a cold start on the Cherokee. It's not that cold out today, 27, but this is before replacing the injector. So the current injectors have one hole. I'm going to replace it with, I believe, 12 hole injectors. And I just wanted to see the cold start, how long it takes to start, but also it would occasionally have a little bit of a stutter. So let's see if we can pick that up. So you can't really see it on the gauges. Very well, I can see it move just barely and I can feel it. I don't know if you're able to see that on camera at all, but anyway, so it does have just a slight stutter there. It's nothing crazy, nothing too bad. This Jeep's been really well taken care of. Lots of injector cleaners been run through it, you know, every like 7,000 miles or something for the first. 150,000 miles of its life. So uh, the injectors are, I imagine, not too bad, but I'm curious to see what the 12 hole does to make a difference. And right now it's showing 17.6 average MPG, and we'll see if we can do better than that with the 12 hole. Again, we're in four wheel drive full time. Okay, three, let's see in there, full, full time, four wheel drive. Three, two, one, go. Eleven point oh four seconds. The reason I wanted to start with this upgrade was because it can increase power and fuel efficiency. So if I'm saving fuel, the sooner I get these in, the more money they will make me over time. Let's see how they actually turn out. All I've done so far is disconnect these throttle cables and they just pop off the two closer to the front slide. And then that one you push back towards the firewall. And then there's two, there are two 10 millimeter bolts there. You just pop those two 10 millimeters out. And then that's basically to where I am now. These are really brittle, the uh, injector plugs. So I might have to replace them, but uh, I've got broken a few clips on them already. I'm not sure how I'm gonna hold this front one on anymore. And basically what I'm doing is replacing these injectors. And I doubt you can see that. I'll try and zoom in if it's focused uh, after I'll zoom in, but there are actually 12 holes in this injector. And the one that's in the Jeep right now only has one hole. So the 12 holes make it atomize really, really well, spread out the fuel so that it's a really good miss that it can burn really quickly and efficiently. Getting ready to pull the fuel rail off. And before, I started on this at all. I turned on the engine and I pulled out the fuel pump relay. And so it burned up all the fuel, depressurized it that was in there. So this rail is still still gonna be full of gas or fuel when they uh, take it off. But at least now there's no pressure in there. And you can also check that by unscrewing this cap. And there's just a straighter valve in there. and. Push that in. And just a couple of drips, but no real pressure. There we go. So there's no real pressure in there at all. Just a couple of drips came out. So that way you have depressurized 
and then you can just pop the fuel rail off and have a gas can handy where you can dump all the fuel in. And all right, to get this fuel rail off, you have five bolts, four bolts, and two of them are <clears throat> bolts and two of them are nuts actually. And you need a deep socket to get to the nuts. And my, or a open end wrench, but apparently my open end wrench that's 10 millimeter is actually smaller than that. So it doesn't actually fit on them. So normally I just try and put the nuts back on the stud and where I can't, I have this magnetic dish that will hold it up, hold it in there so it doesn't get away from me. And I usually put this somewhere magnetic in the engine bay where I can have it stay in place. And there on the front, the whole stud came out as well. So I'll double, double up the nuts to put those in, make sure that I get them in all the way. Okay though, that sucks, but you're okay. Pinchy's a bit too wild. Is he too wild? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was been fun playing with him. Yeah, he's super fun to play with, but uh -huh. he can be a little rough sometimes, huh? A little wild. Yeah. Dad? Yep. I think Randy feels bad that he's been too wild. Maybe he does, does, huh? Eyes. Oh, <laughs> cute puppy eyes. Yep. It's okay, Randy. All right, so that pops off and it's actually retained here, which is really nice. So then you can grab the right fuel line tool. So I have a bunch here and we just find the one that we can fit on there that fits inside and pop that off. And that might be just barely too big. So go the next one down. And this is 9.5 millimeter. Let's see if that one, there we go. What? All right. One thing I forgot to mention is always disconnect your negative on your battery terminal before you start. And this nine and a half millimeter is the right size to remove that fuel line. And there's just a tiny bit of gas there, not a lot that came out, but uh, once we get the rest of the rail out, it'll all, we'll be able to drain all that back out into a gas can. So to get the rest of the rail out, we, it's kind of wiggle it loose and pop it out. And it should come out with all the injectors on it. And it's not wanting to. So I'm gonna clean up any of this gas that spills as well so that it doesn't have problems catching on fire later. But not too much was leaking out of there. So this is being pretty stubborn. So I'm just gonna grab pry bar here, gently pry all of these out. Dad, can I get the toy to play with Ranger? Yes. Okay, I'll get it from inside. There we go. I'll be back. Oh boy, you want this? Do you? Oh boy, I got a toy. Oh my. <laughs> Can you go out to the grass with him? Yeah. <laughs>
He's so strong, huh? You can go, go play with him on the grass. All right, you can see here, there's a difference between these two and the O-ring came off of that one. All right, so I just cleaned out all the injector holes and on number one, it was this O-ring right here had completely rotted away and it was just sitting there on the top of the manifold, whatever, just in crumbles. So that's why I started vacuuming it, but turns out that it was a good idea because there was a, junk, a lot of junk in all of them. And I don't know if you can see here, hopefully that focuses, whatever one it focuses on. We can hopefully get that, but there's only one hole in this injector. So we'll go ahead and switch it out and I'll show you when I have all six of the new ones in there. So to pop these injectors off, they just have these clips right here and they actually rotate around with the injector. You can see that moves. And you just grab a screwdriver and we'll go flying and it's probably easier to do it from here on the back, but that's gonna send it flying. So we pop that under there and that's actually not too bad, at least on that first one. So that was probably off camera. Let me get one more right here. And you just do that for all six of them. All right, I have all of the injectors out, as you can see, and there are two schools of thought. One of them is put the new injectors in here, in the rail, or put the new injectors in the manifold. I'm gonna do them in the intake manifold first. And to do that, you want to just get some grease, whatever, it can be Vaseline, any kind of type of grease, because if you don't, these O-rings will split very easily. And I'm just gonna do on the injector side, and you really don't need much, that's probably still too much. So not much at all. It just helps it slide in much easier. And so now I'll put that in. I'm just gonna start at the back. All right, I changed things around a little bit. The O-rings were much easier to put in into the rail first and then the clips that hold the injectors in place were also easier to put in without it being in the vehicle. So I did vacuum everything in there, try to keep it all as clean as I possibly can. Let's see if we can do this without contaminating the intake at all. Oh no, so apparently I missed recording all that. I thought I had it running that whole time. Anyway, super easy to put back together. I'm not sure where I missed, where it uh, skipped out on, but fuel line, easy, pop that back on, pop it on. Uh, there were just the four bolts for the fuel rail that you put on first before you put the fuel line on. And you don't have to shove everything all together. You can gently put it together and then use the bolts to tighten it down on the fuel rail and it will line everything up. Then over here, just putting those three back together, throwing this hose back on and the last thing I did was this fuel rail. Okay, let's fire it up, see how it goes. All right, it's a little bit colder this time. I think it was 27 on the last cold start. And I actually had a couple days where I started it, well, one other day where I started it, and it actually struggled a little bit. So now with the new injectors, I'm curious to see if there's any difference. So here we go. And it seemed to start up real easy. Let me pop the lights on. You can probably still see the RPM bouncing just a hair. But it seems just slightly smoother. I wouldn't say it's a huge improvement with the new injectors, but yeah, I can still feel it occasionally. Seem like it's missing, or it's a tiny bit rough still on occasion. 
maybe it's a tiny bit better. I don't know, it seems pretty similar to me so far. So the next thing is we're going to reset our fuel mileage here. Oh, hit them both to reset. There we go. There we go. So now our fuel mileage is reset. We were at 17.5 before. We'll see if these new injectors do any better over the next few weeks. All right, and do the three, zero to 60 here. We're in all wheel drive, just like last time, the part time, or full, full time four wheel drive, sorry. Three, two, one, go. This thing does not like to be high RPM. phone it was almost a full second faster than the last one 10.12 i was not expecting that that's a pretty big difference 10 percent gain almost so the other one was 11.04 thank you for watching engine adventures install of these new fuel injectors and quick review i haven't really put that many miles on it so they have uh let's see we had about 300 miles on it with the old injectors and now I have about 800 miles on it with the new ones, a little bit more than that. But the old ones, I was getting 17.6, I believe, miles per gallon, and now I'm up to 19.3. And that could have been from a few different things, the Jeep sitting for a long time, you know, months before I bought it. And so it might have just been, you know, breaking in again, get everything moving and all that stuff. And... Of course, switching to the 12-hole injectors, it should get better atomization. So that's where you saw the 0 to 60 time drop, you know, by a second right away. And I'm guessing the fuel mileage did improve right away as well. But had I purchased new factory or stock fuel injectors, I imagine it would have made a little bit of a difference as well and improved the fuel mileage and power a little bit just because I don't know if those were the original injectors. It seemed like it with 200 plus thousand miles on them, they're going to be clogged a little bit, worn down a little bit, whatever. So having these, the ones that, put, that I put in there are remanufactured, but having those in there, you know, cleaned up, remanufactured, whatever, uh, seemed to have made a pretty big difference. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos, and give me a thumbs up. Also, comment down below with any questions, comments, tips, whatever, if you have ideas on how you would like this Jeep built up. I will definitely consider them. I have a plan in mind now, but uh, I am open to a lot of opinions, and I want to make this thing the best that I can for what I'm doing with it. So if you have any opinions on that, be sure to comment down below and let me know. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.